All right, so now we've brought one image in. It's on its own layer above a, a background that's 4,000 by 6,000 pixels. If I bring, drag and drop another layer in, I can stretch it, I can rotate it. I know that these sources are, are good enough quality pixels, right? I can right click and warp it, push it in different directions. But the problem is when I have multiple layers on top, it's just like sheets of paper, right? And you can't see through them. So, and also if I try to erase from them, and to erase, we're gonna use the lasso tool. And I'm gonna zoom in with Command Plus. And let's say I wanna erase his eye, right? I can lasso around it and hit Delete, but it's not going to let me. And that's because we dragged and dropped them from full files that were on the desktop. And you'll see the little icon on the layer. And that's what's called a smart object. It's a protected layer. So in order to make it not a smart object, before we can erase and before I can get rid of this off-white background, I need to right click on the layer and I need to say rasterize. Now rasterize is a term that means make into um, a really basic digital format that just remembers pixels, right? That doesn't have any kind of other coded information to it. So if I rasterize the layer, it will lose that icon. And then all of a sudden, I can easily delete from it, right? I can erase, I can change, I could add to it, but you're not allowed to add your own pixels, right? We have to use other people's pixels. The other thing I can do is I can take my magic wand, which is right underneath the lasso, and the magic wand will select similarly colored image areas. It will select pixels that are similar to each other. The default is to be a point sample at 32 tolerance, and what I want it to be is not contiguous. So I'm gonna select on that, that empty space that's kind of off-white, and I'm just gonna really quickly darken it for you so you can see what I'm talking about on the projector. So you see this image has, it was scanned from an actual piece of paper. So it's got pixel content there, and I don't want that. So I'm simply going to use the magic wand to select it and then hit delete. And now it's all gone. Right. And to really see it, what I can do is actually turn off my background layer. And you'll see that checkerboard. That means there's truly nothing there, no pixels at all. But we want that background white layer because that's how it's going to print. Okay, so then for the next layer, how do I make it so that I can erase from it? Well, I right click and I rasterize. And then instead of just deleting all the white, which I can do just by doing this, right? I have another option. So I can use the magic wand, select the white and delete. But I can also just change its blending mode from normal to what's called multiply. And what multiply does, there it is is it just takes the darkest pixels and it layers them up. So it's like transparency. And then that allows me to hit Command T and start layering these in different ways. Like maybe I want those hands there. And then I want to take my lasso and maybe get rid of the inside of that eye. Eyes are focal points. Maybe get rid of this part of the arm. Get rid of these little marks that are almost cut off. And that's just two things coming together. And already this is something pretty different than what I originally started with in the references. Okay, so I've used these two. Now I want to bring in another one, drag and drop. I can hold down shift and option, make it bigger. Where can I use his like crazy hair in the composition? I'm not sure yet. Maybe I can hit multiply, change it to multiply mode so I can see it. Use the move tool, 
move it around a little bit. Command T, rotate it. And now for this one, I'm going to delete a lot of it because I really just want those outside marks. So first I have to right click and rasterize it. Then I can use my lasso, which will just give me the cleanest selections, right? And I can just go on this kind of hard edge. Just take a huge chunk of it out. Like that. Maybe take a little bit more. Now at any time, so we learned the shortcut of F11 to get back to the desktop. We learned the shortcut of Command plus to zoom in, Command minus to zoom out, um, Command zero to fit it all on screen. If we're really zoomed in, you can also hold down spacebar, no matter what Photoshop tool you're using, and face spacebar will let you just kind of move around it. Also, the navigator window in the corner allows you to do that and allows you to zoom or move out. And you can see the pixels are staying pretty good quality. Right? If you zoom in enough, you can actually see the, the grid of pixels. So, so far, so good. I want to get rid of his eyeball there. And this is the other fun thing. I can select for this layer and delete the eyeball, but then I can keep that selection active, that little circle I drew with the lasso, move it down to another layer, and delete that same selection from that other layer. So you can move selections between layers, and we're going to get better and better at that. So if I don't like how these are kind of crossing over each other, I can find the layer using little eyeballs next to them, and I can delete the content from it, from only the layer I want to delete it from. Because you are you really get to be in control of these lines. You're just using them as your own brush strokes. Okay, so I've brought three in. I'm going to go to my top layer because the, now the next one I bring in will go on top of that. This one I'm going to flip horizontal, rotate maybe like this, and I'm really going to warp it with the transform box. Then I'm going to immediately rasterize it, and before I multiply it so I can't see everything, I'm going to immediately get rid of a lot of it that I don't want to use. kind of bottom of his body. Maybe get rid of this eye as well. And then I can change it from normal mode to multiply. And then I can use my move tool at the top of my tools. And transform it some more. Use it as these strokes. Hit return, hit command T, and stretch it more, and keep going back and forth. Now I've got kind of spikes coming out from all edges. That might make me think about deleting some from these other edges, these other layers. And just like I can transform and warp the whole thing, I can also select just a part of a layer 
and do command T to just that part and change the direction of that line and hit return. like all of these cool marks. I can take these, select them with the lasso, and then actually move them. Where are we? Oh, wrong layer. There we go, this layer. And actually move them and transform them. We're just using these references as like a palette of different marks for us to, to place where we like. And we made sure that they were high enough resolution that they're not terrible. Now, a shortcut for moving around, like I've been turning layers on and off. And with five, it's not too hard, not too many to keep track of. But if I wanted to just know exactly what layer something was, on the Move tool, you'll see the options for the tool at the very top. And an important option for the Move tool is Auto Select. So usually I'll have it on auto select layer, which means that any pixel I click on, it will immediately go to that layer and select it. So I can affect that layer. Now with multiply on, that can be confusing because there are pixels layered up on top of each other. But for instance, right here, this shows me that that's that layer. It automatically selected it. So I can take that and move that somewhere else and transform it, right. Okay, so I have four references. I need to bring one more in. <coughs> I have a lot of just heads. I think I'm gonna skip this one for now. I'm gonna bring this one in, which I remember I liked. It's got all the cool stars and stuff. Stretch it. Notice because I wasn't, I didn't select the layer at the very top before I brought it in, that this layer came in underneath another layer. That's fine. You can still see it. I'm going to place it. I'm going to set it on multiply. And I'm going to rasterize it. And this is another one where it has off white for the paper. I'll darken it so you can see it. There we go. So you can see it. But because I used the magic wand to select it, you see it's not affecting the black pixels. So then I can just delete. And now all that's gone. Now in the same way, there's a lot I want to delete from it. And I'm going to delete from it in an interesting way. So I can just make kind of big loops and delete like that. But check this out. This is kind of cool. I'm going to go back to another layer, like this one, right? And then I'm going to use my magic wand with contiguous turned on. And I'm going to select the empty spaces that I can find. So for instance, uh, not as empty as I want. Let's see. There, that's that layer. So inside this eyeball, right? You can add to a selection by holding down shift. So I now have that whole eyeball selected. I'm going to take this hair, I'm going to select a little bit of that. I take that hand, select a little bit of that. I take this hand, and you see because it's open there, it's selected more than I wanted it to. So I'm going to hit Command Z, go a step back. Then I'm going to go to the bicycle layer. I'm going to select inside the bicycle tire. There, right there, right here, right here. All these kind of self-contained shapes 